So welcome. I am delighted to introduce our stellar lineup of speakers for this evening. And what better place to start than talk about the Indian wine industry? Everybody is looking to the Indian wine industry and see how we can catapult the growth of the Indian wine industry from where we are today to five times its size, go to five thousand crores over the next five years. This is a very very ambitious vision, but I know that this is a a topic of discussion and something that has been on all of our minds. So we've lined up the most amazing la uh, panel of speakers who will speak about this vision today. We have Ravi Vishwanathan, who is the chairperson at Grover Zampa Vineyards, among the leading wine producers of India. We also have Gaurav Sekri, who is the managing director and the co-founder at uh, Fratelli Vineyards, who's also joining us today. Um, and Fratelli, again, Vineyards, again, needs no introduction among the leading and top three uh, wineries in India. And of course, we have Subhash Arora, who is a prolific wine writer, wine judge who travels all around the globe. And if there's a wine tasting competition happening, it's most likely that Subhash Arora will be there. He's been a friend and a colleague for as long as I've been in the industry and well before me. And uh, I'm, I'm really delighted to welcome all three of you on this panel. Thank you for making the time. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. so let me start with asking Ravi. Uh, Ravi, in your opinion, we uh, what what you've been witnessing the Indian wine industry for quite a number of years now. In the in the beginning, more as an investor, uh, and more more lately, you kind of you know you you you've taken it head on to as a chairperson with Grover Zampa Vineyards. So you've seen it from a distance. You're seeing it now very closely, and you've been watching this industry grow over the span of the last decade. And we want to know from you what, according to you, are some of the important strides that we have made in the Indian wine industry over the past five years. How far do you think we've come? What have we done right so far? And uh, what remains to be to be done, in your opinion? Well, the, the, the obvious answer is that quality has massively improved over the last decade. Uh, over the maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was easy to criticize Indian wines. Uh, today, uh, major wineries in the country produce wine which are decent by any global standard. And that's evidence in the number of medals we collect in international competitions and and other things of that nature. So that, that, that's a diff and, and there's been a, a significant focus on quality everywhere, which is somewhat different from what happened in the growth in, in the growth of the Chinese wine industry. At the beginning, we never focused on quality. I think India has focused on quality first. Yeah. And I think the people are not starting to appreciate it. Hmm. And that focus on quality has allowed the industry to now have. Uh, a skilled pool of talents. We have winemakers. We don't need. There are not so many uh, imports in terms of human resources in the industry now, compared to what other countries have done in early stages of the wine industry, sure. which were completely dominated by imported uh, talents. In, in India, we have now homegrown talent. We both at viticulture and winemaking level. And the quality has improved, so I think that's a very good um, base. Now the yeah, next step is yeah, to we've established go a bigger and quality a standard, sort of, yeah. and we've developed a pool of qualified winemakers and all other professionals yeah. within India. So we're able to be Atmanirbhar, which is what our our government wants us to be. Correct. So yeah, uh, and if you look at our China or Chile or Argentina or even Australia when they started their wine industry. It, it was somewhat different. They were focusing more on volume, more on entry-level wines, and had to import a lot more of the human resources needed to grow their industry. In India, we managed for many reasons, some of them due to the administrative complications of doing business in India, right. to put it mildly. But we've, we've managed to grow domestically, the talent pool, the quality and everything. And tropical viticulture is not easy. We are one of the rare countries in the world where tropical viticulture. Yes. Yes. And we have some real challenges with climatic, uh, yeah, you know, our own climatic uh, conditions and, and 
uh, how we cope with that. So yes, absolutely. It's not easy doing. Uh, you know, we've actually defied every single norm that we learn theoretically, where they say some of the best vineyards lie in the latitude of. 30 to 50 degree latitude and we're just too too close to the equator and despite and although we are closest to the equator in the northern hemisphere somehow cyclically we tend to follow the southern hemisphere sort of a pattern of harvesting isn't it yeah. uh, so yeah. we have we, we have our own sort of uniqueness and I, i do have a question for garo but before that i wanted to ask you you touched upon an important point about being self reliant as far as developing this human resource is concerned but is this something we've had to do or is this been by design and a good thing what i mean to say is do you think we would have benefited better if we had had larger level of investments coming through more flying winemakers coming in from all across the world who would perhaps sure, sure, sure be quality and you know sure it helps but one of the the consequence of having this push for quality over the last decade has been to grow uh, in that stuff to grow the skill set because you cannot produce quality if you don't have skilled people and this emphasis on quality has helped achieve that it could have gone faster if we had the uh, 10 times the resources that imported uh, everything but at least it's on growing and it's a solid base Yes, yes. And sometimes we can't just assume that a, a, an expatriate will fully understand and appreciate the Indian terroir and the challenges mm-hmm. that come with it too. Sometimes, you know, maybe just being local and being homebred or homegrown sort of gives us an innate sense of understanding of what is needed on our on our soils or across our topography and so on, isn't it? Would you would you agree with that? Yeah, and, and today we objectively Indians are the only ones with the in-depth knowledge of tropical viticulture. nobody else in the world right so right so according to you we've done we've done good work in the areas of quality and developing a pool of uh, you know homegrown talent but obviously the challenges that remain ahead of us are how do we circumvent the challenges that the inherently the nature provides that stops us from sort of surging forward and creating um I mean we have to deal with these climatic problems and and tropical viticulture challenges and sometimes maybe that comes in the way of our being a huge voice on the global stage isn't it that, that that's what we're saying yeah, but, but if I may say so in the indian context overcoming the challenges of nature is a lot easier than overcoming the challenges of government of the government okay great yes i agree and that's been a lifelong journey for us all um let me quickly ask gaurav gaurav you have recently i know you have been involved with fratelli vineyards right from the beginning and you've worked very closely with kapil um our dear friend but more lately you've been of course more closely involved you've taken charge full on and you're now in the driving seat at fratelli vineyards what i want to ask you gaurav is as somebody who has experience from other industries as well right which are more industrial or more manufacturing uh, because your family is involved in other businesses as well which you've been more closely involved with what sort of a when you come in with a fresh perspective um how do you feel about our industry as you know maybe momentarily you can answer this question even as an outsider when you step in how do you feel about this industry do you find it too small too inward thinking what do you feel we need to be able to surge forward and what is it that we are doing and not even thinking about yet so i think uh, uh, so so the first you thank you for inviting me to uh, be part of this uh, you know very learned panel to comment although i'm literally just 4 months old in uh, in sort of trying to understand and manage the wine business on a day to day basis um so for uh, you know when i see the wine industry to me the um, the issue is it's a chicken and egg situation uh, when i see it you know with a fresh pair of eyes um to really get um, uh, you know get real high quality of anything involved you need scale and i think uh, you know scale uh, in india is a little bit linked to uh, some of the things which are systemically at fault with this industry which is what i think ravi touched on as well um and i think that is what prevents us to to get true potential of the scale that's possible in this industry um and and i think a lot of that is just uh, is just in the hands of the government uh, it's easier said than done as to what what they can fix and how they will fix uh but it is truly in the hands 
of the government you know the um, uh, i think a lot of my peers in this industry like us uh, suffered the brunt of abrupt changes of law you know forget about just normal ease of doing business you know abrupt changes of law like that highway order that came a couple of years ago right bars restaurants yeah. outlets had to shut if they were x uh, 100 meters just overnight yeah um, you know delhi government allowed uh, uh, you know modern retail outlets uh, uh, the license to sell wine and then suddenly withdraw it uh, yeah. and you know a lot of people got stuck as collateral damage so these are just things which are completely unnecessary yeah. uh, aside from the fact that if they make you know the taxation easier availability easier um, you know which are which are you know just so easy uh, to do in a manner, manner you know manner of speaking they've all we've also had to cope with these very very sudden and dramatic changes um that uh, also come uh, uh, in india and i think uh, it's only us indian companies who have the wherewithal to somehow um, you know uh, either we are overly religious etc we have faith in god and we just kind of believe we take it on the chin and we move on many yeah. other companies if they had the choice or who are not indian would throw in the towel and leave sure uh, yeah no i agree with you gorav i want to just play devil's advocate for a second and ask you a supplementary question to your observations and i i really like your point about scale you know like we we were unable to achieve the scale we want because of all the erratic government regulatory changes that take place in this country but i was in conversation with somebody in the trade who was who, who kind of deals more closely with the excise and you know the people in the government and so on and uh, the the talk was completely contrary i heard this for the first time in my life um i was given to um, you know we've always blamed the government right in, in and for rightful reasons we're right in doing so for for being unhappy but um, i heard that the government's view up on us or about us is more like the, the there are problems for all alcobef Uh, industries right the same sort of uh, taxes exist for whiskey or any any category of spirits or beers and so on and yet some of these industries have have really grown to a, a massive scale they've achieved such an amazing scale india has now suddenly taken to so much beer gin is all the rage right now and so on and the apparently the government is now looking to us as and i call us all as one is looking to us and saying what is wrong with you wine people you know the same rules exist for everybody why are you all not being able to move forward um we try to do more for the indian wine industry by relaxing you all and protecting you against the onslaught of imports and so on uh, and yet we've not been able to achieve that certain scale so my un- for the first time i heard this person say to me that the government apparently is looking at us and is also expressing their displeasure at the fact that we've not been able to achieve the scale so my question my devil's advocate question is why is that and secondly is more of us better or less of us in the sense if we have more players in this industry will we even be more crippling because there'll be more competition and uh you know will consumption grow because of that or not grow or will you know it lead to a larger consolidation what is better um do we need more of us or do we need fewer of us no i i think uh, it's uh, you know there is no debate on more of us or or less of us we just need the whole industry to grow uh you know whether some players become bigger and larger mm-hmm. uh, uh or or just new people come in fact every time a new person come we are new i mean uh, relatively speaking 10 years is is not that old in in the in in a wine business um so i think new players are welcome people come with fresh pair of eyes fresh ideas it challenges the existing people with you know who maybe have set into some sort of inertia and it makes everyone do better so answer to that specific question is more of us is better and so the more the merrier and you don't think that more the merrier more competition and you know sort of uh, and 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 uh, you uh, i mean how do you even control that i mean and one one should not and and uh, one cannot uh, but the wine is a very different business compared to a lot of other alcohol businesses here you um, you know spend about 3 years just getting good quality grapes to be able to harvest and then produce wine um, you know the, the uh, all the other spirits that you mentioned i mean gin Uh, i mean uh, one could probably s- from starting of of an idea to having something out is probably 4 months right uh, yes. uh, you you can you can have the product out micro breweries people are putting all around 
um, distilling is not is not that um, uh, you know the time gestation period isn't a problem in yeah. wine the issue is the barrier of time mm. in order to make good quality wine and i think uh, because there has been just uh, no money in the business and and you only need to see uh, you know um, uh, how the business is done financially to know that there is very little to no money in this business and it's very tough for small players i think who tend to remain just regional um, it's even more difficult for them um, mm. uh, because of that you know new vineyards don't come up new investments don't come up um, and you have this problem then which eventually starts reflecting on quality um, so so you know that is the issue here which you need you need to unshackle this industry uh, yes. you cannot the comparison to other alco web uh, is not really fair in my view Fair. It's not a fair comparison. Fair enough. But but the word money caught my attention. So I have a question on money, but I'll come back to you later. So Bash, I do want to um, uh, ask you. Uh, you know, you and I know we we travel a lot. We go overseas in the overseas markets, and uh, many times people don't even know India makes wines. Uh, and I know you are as much an ambassador in constantly promoting the Indian wine industry and so on. So here's my counter view. At one end, we say that we need the West to appreciate our wines, and so the more they appreciate our wines, the the better our own Indians start to appreciate its own product. you know like we need an endorsement from the west before we start endorsing our own products and start feeling proud of it but at the counter view you know and i know subash when we talk to wine makers or or indian wine producers they are more focused on domestic consumption given that we're such a large country base and there's so much opportunity here and so export somewhere takes a bit of a back seat and ends up being more like a prestige thing rather than an area of attention what are your views about this how much role do you think exports or positioning of wines in the international scene can play towards this growth story that we're trying to achieve uh, over the next 5 years how important do you think that is and why uh, your uh, comments encapsulates what uh, ravi started saying initially uh, and i have been saying it for the last 20 years always that export is absolutely essential to improve the quality for the very simple reason that uh people outside of india are more appreciative or more understanding of wine than we have been we would drink whatever we get and this is where we kind of went wrong in the first 15 years or so right after indej came they kept on giving us the crap and we kept on drinking it they kept on importing bulk wine bottling it and selling it and we are thinking that okay we are having great wines but uh, at the end of the day the export is where the benchmark does come in because that industry has been mature over the century wine is not something which happens overnight and as god have rightly said we, and, and and in a, a comment to your, your comment about the government official the problem is right here that we think of wine as an alco bev product hmm. and i honestly speaking don't even consider it alco bev product i always say that wine is not alcohol it has some but it's not a alcoholic product you know to me an alcoholic product is when you get get to get drunk and wine is not that it's a lifestyle product it's a food product and the government has to appreciate the fact that we are about uh, a, a a different product than and like gora rightly said that you the have these products uh, three four months down the line and you are ready with it and wine if you store you know like i remember in days they used to say that oh we got liquid gold lying in our tanks in in the late 90s uh sham Ch- chogle used to say that we have gold in our tanks and the gold is worth nothing after a few years and unless you know you you drink it or, or you bottle it and drink it so so therefore you know i think uh, we we need to uh, uh, the quality has come up and 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 ravi did mention the last 10 years it is absolutely a fact now but we also know that before that it was not that great because we had a whole lot of farmers uh, you know who thought wow you know we we grow grapes we will ferment the wine and uh, that's the thing where you make 300 400 500 100% and and we are fine but that's where the quality did not work and it's a small producer if you ask me you do talk to fratelli now i think the reason 
uh, for the success of Fratelli has been then they were very outward looking uh, whatever they've done the products that they came up with and the amount uh, uh, Kapil worked hard and uh, initially we were working with Italians and the winemaker was Italian so all those things helped them look outwards and you saw that the quality came up much faster uh, than uh, the producers uh, of course uh, Sula was small when he was making good wine you know the Sauvignon Blanc uh, of 1999 is still something that's talked about, you know, and they made only a few thousand cases. So I think the bigger numbers are important for us because you talked about the 5,000 crore, you know, uh, to how to take the 5,000 crore. And that is not going to happen with these players, obviously. So you need to have more players in any case, apart from other things, the problem that we can discuss. But you have to have more players in the game in order to improve the quality and that will happen only if you are export oriented i mean look at uh, grover grover has been exporting wine to france for 20 25 years but Thelly is already there in so many countries sula has been there in over 30 countries so i think uh, export is a really really essential for anybody to be able to improve the quality when you look at york for example you know they, they are into their export game somewhat you know they're small but they're not very big in that but yes. that has helped them in, in improve the quality yes i agree uh, i i i also agree with that view subash because uh, while there's no direct correlation in improving quality when you do place your wines in the overseas markets particularly the more developed markets where there is more competition and there's a greater need for us to uh, be able to offer a certain standard i think you know if there are opportunities that come like we recently had a wine from india um, that got listed at waitrose uh, and now yeah. there are some series of webinars that are about to take place uh, at the 67 palmal which is going to showcase again indian wines and an understanding of the indian wine industry and i think when we compete on the global stage we automatically sort of push ourselves to offer uh, a higher quality or a world-class quality as opposed to sometimes maybe if you're offering our offering remains at the local level we sort of assume that uh, um, uh, you know it, it's okay to you know like like I've often wondered and I don't know anybody can take this question but I've often wondered why in India do we not have four or five hundred rupee wine which is a single variety where we can respectably offer a Chardonnay or a Shiraz or a Sauvignon Blanc or whatever it is uh, and why is it generally like a multi-blend of all the things that are put together and mostly anonymous um, and um, uh, you know why is the Indian wine industry unable to offer a simple everyday drinking but a clean pure well-made sound quality wine at between four to five hundred rupees because i think that's something that will help aid the consumption to a higher level won't it uh, and uh, subhash i want to know what your comments yeah, are. i i think before ravi or uh, gaurav react to it i would like to say that that is a number one factor which is responsible which is going to be responsible for mass consumption of wine we are talk about wine which are Okay, we used to get wine for five, four, five, six hundred, uh, but twenty years ago. But today, wines are good. Wines are more than a thousand rupees, and people normally cannot afford those wines on an everyday basis. We want people to get into the habit of opening a bottle of wine without, uh, you know, saying, "Oh my goodness, uh, it's, it's a thousand rupees a bottle, and if I just..." finish half a bottle or one third of a bottle the rest is gonna go waste that's another problem with wine of course so i think the answer will definitely lie and i have uh, i i do appreciate fratelli has a classico which uh, is pretty decent wine but but they're also they used to sell for 400 rupees now it's gone to 550 600 rupees something like that so i think 400 rupees is the key figure where you have to have a nice drinkable wine it's it's, it's okay if you have a, a blend i mean varietal or blend is the same thing i mean if you have chardonnay <clears throat> and you blend it with sauvignon blanc you think it's a better taste it's okay but uh, you need to keep that figure for masses there are people who trade up all over the world their wines they sell for two dollars they sell for two thousand dollars but the two dollar wines sell a hell of a lot you know right. so right. therefore our growth will depend on this 400 rupee wine you pick the right point where you said that those are the wines we need to have and more of and where the guy doesn't have to think anything about it goes to a store and picks up that wine and enjoys drinking it sure ravi gaurav any thoughts on how pricing could play a role in in helping boost consumption of wine in in the country 
Ravi, yeah. you want to go ahead first, please? Uh, the pricing, there, there are two strands of thought that we're exploring. One is that in the end, the, the MRP that the consumer faces uh, contains a lot of taxation. So if, ta if taxation changes, then the, the, the price will drop. And uh, wine is more tax per degree of alcohol than uh, than whiskey. If you compare a whiskey at forty percent alcohol, look at the price, of, the amount of tax you pay for every milliliter of pure alcohol that you get in whiskey compared to wine, you'll find a factor of maybe six. The difference, a factor of six. In, wine is not tax; it's water which is taxed in the wine, which is absurd. The, 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 I think the second. Uh, Thing that you must uh, realize is that wine is not cheap to produce in India. India is a low cost production place for industry. You can produce cheap industrial goods. It's not a low cost producer of wine because of the, the, the tropical viticulture that involves more cost than normal viticulture because we have two growing season per year. So we spend twice as much in the fields. Uh, the life expectancy of the vines is lower. La agricultural land is expensive in India. It's expensive even compared to France. So, there are many regions in France where you can buy a vineyard for a lot cheaper than I pay in India. Mm. In, the, the, because of the need of um, irrigation, because of the climate, the, the capex involved in planting a vineyard in India is not cheap by world standards. All, all of these contribute. There's no way we can achieve the bulk pricing that Chile or, or Australia can achieve. Ravi, I well appreciate your point that the cost of production in India for wine is high and also mostly for the reasons that you've just stated, which is the high cost of sort of overcoming challenges, not being able to, uh, you know, do too much use of, um, you know, disease pressure is high. So you have to try and protect the quality and the integrity of the uh, during the wine growing season, uh, the cost of all imported material, bottling, everything, barrels, everything coming from overseas. Uh, so I fully appreciate that. But in the same token if i can again play devil's advocate we do see at the retail level uh schemes going out of like you know uh maybe i'm getting getting more technical now and more trade level related mm -hmm. but the point is that when we offer our retailers buy one get one free sort of schemes yeah. in the market i'm not saying you specifically yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 broadly no, about that, the that, that's, so don't don't feel like targeting yeah. But when the industry offers a yeah. buy one, get one free to the retailer and the retailer sometimes does That's not crazy. end up passing that discount to the consumer, the consumer still ends up bearing the brunt of having to pay higher taxes. The retailer mm. takes the advantage of a over a 50% discount. I'm saying, why does he need to be given a 50-60% scheme? If he can just be given his 12% and maybe double of that, maybe a 20-25% scheme, but no more than that. And then the rest of the benefit is passed on to the right. consumer by right. way of more rationalized right. pricing. Why can't this happen? Uh, Adam Smith can Don't explain Don't hate me for asking this question, but I'm dying to know. No, no, no. Adam Smith can explain to you why that's the invisible end of the market. And there's a competitive pressure is fierce despite the industry being small and People feel the urge, which I think is misguided, but feel the urge to give discounts. Now, on the more philosophical approach, the whole industry creates value. That value is not today going to farmers or going to wineries or going to consumers. It goes mostly to trade. When you compare the level of schemes in, in wine compared to whiskey, it's uh, many orders of magnitude difference. So there is value created by the industry. It is not captured by consumers or farmers. There is value in the aviation industry. Historically, it's not been for the shareholder of the aviation industry. It has been for consumers, for travelers. The same thing is happening. We need to figure out a way to get out of that death spiral because we'll, we'll all be dead if we continue crazy schemes. Low be dead. And it's extremely important in the end that the consumer be able to receive those benefits. And one of the things that the government can do, or the government's state mostly, is allow online sales and deliveries. Because that will immediately change the, the nature of the game and you will see the price paid by the consumer drop substantially. Okay. Got any thoughts on pricing before I move to the 
next question no no i i echo ravi's uh, comments completely um, even um, on the you know on the on the on the growth side as well you know our climate conditions uh, uh, basically uh, enabled the very aggressive growth of of your uh, at your vineyards as a result even the life of uh, vineyards will be shorter uh, it, that is our belief in india compared to other parts of the world because they are producing all the time they never get to rest because of the uh, prevalent climatic conditions um and i think uh, what ravi also said on the retail side there is value being created is just getting lost um uh, lost in the sense it is going in the pockets of someone just not the consumers or the producers yeah um, but that creates a very unfortunate vicious cycle because what happens is at the end of the day and and you know we talk to customers or every day right in the business they are friends they are customers their clients and so on and i think when it comes to look we're all fully aware that the price of wine is determined by so many factors you know the cost of land the cost of marketing the cost of logistics the cost of material there are so many variants there's also a certain brand value and so on right that that exists globally but at the end of the day all said and done my only point is that whatever liquid is in the glass and whatever is the price of that liquid there there has to be an intrinsic relationship which means that when i take a sip of that wine i should feel like it tastes what 1200 rupees if i'm paying 1200 rupees for that bottle if that intrinsic value is not on the taste then i think this it, we're flawed to start with and i think what happens uh, of course this is not a reflection on any of your wines i'm just making a very generalized statement uh when the entire industry operates at a at a 900 plus and a 1000 1200 1400 and my god even going as high as 4000 if the intrinsic taste of that wine doesn't offer that value to the consumer on the palate then there's a dissonance there's a disconnect and then you know then all these things i mean the retailer does, i mean the, the consumer doesn't know that the retailer is eating all the margin and not passing it over to him he just automatically looks to the wine company and says these guys are just making you know wines that i don't enjoy so i think the reputational risk ultimately lies with the the wine production company and i think wine producing companies need to according to me take a closer look at how their pricing is translating down to the consumer and take charge of that because if that benefit is not going to the consumer by way of the schemes then maybe it's time to relook at those those sort of uh, you know the the whole supply chain and how the price of wine gets altered in that entire supply chain uh, process uh, subhash any thoughts on this absolutely you know uh, uh, when i got your message and i started jotting down a few points and uh, within 10 minutes i think i had got 35 points my first point right on top was stop giving schemes like today i think this has been the bane of the wine industry and the producers no no fault of theirs because they are all in a rut right now i remember the time when when you calculated you were talking of 15% discount so to speak you know a uh, 20% then it went to 25% and then today 50% is is nothing people are talking of 60% discounts i've got a scheme with me of these producers who are giving one more than the other and you're right and sometimes even the damn laws do not allow the the retailer to discount the wine bombay of course is still can do to some extent and there are people who pass on some but you rightly said that the discount is not passed on and the producers are not making money out of it and they are in the vicious circle i think they are stuck in the like bit, between the mafia i call the retail people as mafias today to be honest and thank they, you subhash thank yeah. you for sharing that just to switch gears a little bit uh, subhash what role can people like you and me and media and influencers and educators and writers play to to help the industry grow what do you feel we can do well i think the one thing that will kind of counter this and that has to be through the government and that is number one is the online sales they have to allow the online sales and they have to allow the wine industry the producers to be able to sell directly at the price that they like to sell maybe at the winery maybe at a depot maybe one place in town where people can go and buy and where they can give those discounts and bring the prices down because producers need to have the margin and they are not getting the margins you know uh, um, you talk of sula grower patelli all the time 
But I don't know Grover how much money Grover is making off at Delhi. Sula is making some money over the last twenty years. They've been working at it. But the thing is that we have to have and so we have to keep on pushing the government to allow the online sales, home deliveries, and stuff like that, which makes the producer the more accessible to the consumer. So with the retailers also come to the senses because today they think that okay, you know, this is to me it's a commodity. I you give me the fifty percent and I'll sell. Otherwise, I don't sell. The quality or not quality, I don't care. So you need to sort of work on that as an influencer. And and for uh, for Ravi and for Gaurav, uh, do you feel any lack of concern about? Uh, do you feel a concern about the fact that India lacks any kind of rules or regulations that govern production, labeling, integrity, uh, and you know we talk about quality, but quality is not regulated in our country. So. Uh, can ipa play a role there so ipa for the benefit of our viewers is is uh, all india wine producers association it has existed now for a few years but it's had its moments of being more active and less active over the past years and i know that more recently there have been some there's been some movement and some some efforts to sort of really have ipa come into the fore and and do more uh, you know take charge of the front seat so ravi how do you feel uh what what firstly what can ipa do for us what should it be doing rather and how do you think we can as an industry benefit uh from that well it's it's not completely fair to say that we are in a sort of unregulated environment we we are not uh, there are many uh restrictions and controls on what we can and cannot do because it's it's, it's a food item Uh, there are many restrictions because of excise on what can and cannot be done because it's an alcoholic beverage, and we remember that we are also uh, exporting. We know so the big producers in India export around the world, so they are effectively subject to the regulation of those countries. In order to sell our wines in the EU in Japan, we need to meet tough criteria. So that environment exists. It's not really as codified in India as it is elsewhere. It will come. The industry is still young. It will come. Uh, it's actually helpful for us to have more regulation, more label rules, more uh, terroir rules. But it's also barrier to the uh, to entry for the new entrants. I'm in favor of it. I I understand what you're saying about about the fact that yes, we we automatically get regulated when we export our wines, mm. and we we are subject to it because our excise and our FSSAI and all these other bodies are very very particular about you know um, certain declarations on where on labels of sulfites and alcohol levels yeah. and, and additives and so on. But still, you know, there is a lot of. Um, uh, unanswered or unaddressed areas in terms of uh, d- proper disclosure of grape varieties for example like label integrity for example or appellations uh, don't exist for us yet um quality yields uh, plantations density of plants you know all of that so all of these which are intrinsically linked to quality are still areas that need to be sort of addressed do you feel um some of this also could could i mean i know it's not going to directly lead to making us a 5000 crore industry but the point being uh, what role can ipa play and not just with regulatory but more at a promotion level how do you see like if you were the president of ipa what would you expect the ipa to do i think the notion of terroir which is accepted in india from a regulatory point of view and also from a consumer point of view would be hugely beneficial that's one way of increasing the value what is what is being produced and incentivizing farmer to produce more where it matters or oh, it's worth it today uh, there are crazy regulations say in maharashtra you cannot transport uh, wine between wineries that's a very complicated thing so and you cannot transport between states that's huge uh, excise impact So we plant some varietals in Maharashtra, some in Karnataka, and maybe the best of all is only in Maharashtra, and maybe the best of all is only in Karnataka. We are not, we are prevented from planting the best grapes in the best terroir today. There's all sorts of rules. Getting away those rules will definitely help the industry grow. Will get the industry in a better shape. Will help, will help farmers because it will be easier for them to get better valuation for 
dhanan that they have so uh, all of this should sub- is something that should happen yeah and, and we will push for it as much as possible great great now or- the drawback it's uh, it prevents uh, it's, it's a kind of administrative barrier to, to competition but there's maybe the price to pay to grow at this stage amazing well thank you for that gorav i want to touch upon a quick marketing question for you um i want to ask you about because fratelli is very active you know i know it has a social media page you have a lot of followers uh, there's a lot you do in terms of trying to make wine appear young uh, and and more contemporary more fun um, so the communication of wine uh, obviously needs to be adapted but my point is what are your thoughts about bringing new consumers to wine and what is it that you feel the consumer is looking for and who are the consumers of wine the way you see them in india today before i answer that i'll i'll just give you three points which i think you know the uh, organization the association or even um, you know yourself and uh, mr arora can can help address you know we have some very low hanging fruits um, which one can aim for i think um, this uh, 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 issue of grape movement interstate i mean it's just silly uh, for it to be not allowed I right agree. uh yeah. farmers are suffering because of that um they are playing in the hands of touts and intermediaries uh, because eventually market will find a way to 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 service its need uh, but the farmers are suffering um you know our embassies many of them uh, do not serve indian wine you know we are screaming about vocal for local and things like that but if you go to an indian embassy abroad invariably they will not have indian wine now that just sets a terrible uh, example it almost it's like screaming out to say that you know we are incapable of making good wine now that's a very simple tweak uh, a simple diktat which can fix it um it's a poor reflection of uh, of of our policy um so that's another issue i think there are some institutions hotels restaurants in india which are a bit biased against indian wine some of it you can say as subhaji rightly said uh you know our early wine making uh, you know uh, efforts were probably not great and they developed a bit of a bias against indian wine but that's not the case anymore you know we do make good wines but still there are some institutions which have this thing that we will not list indian wines i think some of this needs to go away and I, and i want to just credit taj hotels who is actually going the opposite way which is saying that no we're going to list everything that is indian uh we're going to give it preference and this That's sector a needs that brilliant point you have raised garo you remind me of my holiday i took 2 years ago and i went to croatia and croatia is on the world wine you know map of wine making but it's not there you know it's like it's not kind of it's not the first point of reference for wine making when you think of croatia uh and i stayed there for a week and i we ate out and and there was croatian wines 70% croatian wines listed across all their restaurants and croatia gets an awful lot of tourism i mean they are just flooded with tourists and 70% of their wine lists were dominated by croatian wines were all of them amazing no of course not but did we try a croatian wine every evening every single evening absolutely i tried so many croatian wines and I ended up drinking more croatian wines i love your point about the fact that the embassy the government bodies the restaurants the bars the the airlines um, and every service industry uh needs to embrace a not just one or two labels but a very large percentage of indian wine brands because if we don't do it who will like if it's, uh, it's so not, uh, yeah. my my limited point is that we do not want to deny consumers uh the opportunity to choose even yeah. imported wines that that yes. would be unfair as well yes. to the consumers but at the same time the right kind of uh, atmosphere has to be created for indian wines to be sampled and tried by people um and and that's the limited point i'm making and and some of these things are not that complicated to fix um so that was my point and i can get to answering your question about marketing but i think um, I, maybe mr subhash arora has has something to say subhash yeah Uh, okay so i think this is a great point uh, i have been uh, um, talking to the various ministries for a number of years now and uh, i i do remember sir mr matthew that was name in was foreign secretary uh, uh, but f- f- uh, 10 years ago and he did tell me that uh, they have informed all the embassies abroad 
to serve Indian wines. Now, you know, they, and I told them, I said, you know, your embassies and your government, they all expect free wine, which is not fair. Because the producer has to survive, you know, you have to give him, okay, get good prices. But, you know, when White House buys their wines from California, they pay for the wine. When the Queen buys wines from England to the market, they pay for the wines. So, if in India, you think that, okay, I'll serve your wine. And because I do, I do know that embassies contact these producers, and I'm, it happens many times, when it's okay, we'll serve your wine, but please sell us, send us four cases of free wine. And out of three cases, probably he's, uh, he's drinking in his own house. So that is not the way to do things. But yes, we need to. And I really appreciate God's uh, point over there. And the other fact, which which I on, I'm on record to have said 12 years ago, that Indian uh, state functions, banquets, we must start thinking of serving Indian wines, only Indian wines, like they do in, in the US. And I also said... That will take 100 years before that happens. But we have to make the efforts. 12 years has happened. I mean, I'm still saying that. And I think 88 years, maybe your grandchildren can push that idea and hopefully we'll have one day. But I think those are the things because that we need to give respect to the Indian wine, which has not been happening. And by doing these things, you do get the respect and of course, more visibility and people who who sort of uh, read about it or who uh, drink these wines or hear about these wines, they'll drink more, you know, so that helps increase the production, the consumption. Amazing, amazing. I'm going to uh, ask one question for all three of you to answer. And it's a very easy and a broad sort of a question and allows you to give me any creative answer that you like. But the question is this. If you were made the CEO of the Indian wine industry, like overall in charge, not just of Fratelli or Grover Vineyards or anything else, just overall in charge of the entire wine industry, what three changes would you make at the policy or the business level to become a 5,000 crore industry? It could even just be a decision that you make. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a change of policy. But what three things would you like to see implemented at a national level um, and you could even talk about imported wines if you like. But, you know, what, what sort of decisions would you like to or changes you'd like to see come through to make this immediately a 5,000 crore industry in the next five years? Uh, let me, I'm happy for anybody to take this question. Okay, let me answer that. Uh, first of all, I think you, the question you sh said about CEO, that will not really help. What you need to do, or what do you need to say is, what if you were the prime minister of the country? Yes, agreed. Because, because our problem is in the constitution. And if I were the prime minister, like Mr. Modi is all the power he's got, I would amend the, se the section uh, 47 uh, in, in, the, in the constitution and say that wine is not a part of the alcohol. The key problem in India, and it's problem in many other countries in the world also, by the way, that we are lumping wine with alcohol. We are lumping wine with alcohol, with uh, liquor, uh, whiskey and gin and all that, which are a different ballgame altogether. So we have to, we have to sort of uh, have different po policies for wine. And so therefore, you know, I, I would say that that's very essential. And the other thing, you know, like this, uh, I, I mean, I was just thinking, uh, uh, giving a, a sort of uh, a thought to the whole thing and amusing myself. And I said, a seminar like this, you need to have, three of us is fine, but we needed to have the Minister of Finance, Health, Agriculture, and Food Processing Industries also. Because these are the people who need to be educated. What we know, what we are, we are here because of our passion, whether it's you or Ravi or Gaurav or, 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 or Rajiv Saman, they're all doing it for passion. Money, of course, is essential, but uh, you're doing it with passion. So therefore, it is very essential for the government to understand and appreciate that wine is something different and it has to be uh, taken care of separately and then let the industry grow uh, uh, in, in that style. Great. Thank you. Uh, Ravi, Gaurav, any thoughts? Uh, I, I would say three things I would do as a prime minister and I cannot be prime minister of India. So that's easy for me to say. I, I I was going a bit realistic with CEO of Indian wine industry, but no, Subhash wants to catch the bull by its yeah. horn. Well. No, I think the three things are not in that order necessarily of importance are probably yeah. for me 
GST, online sales, and uh, revamping agricultural land rules, which make it very, very difficult to grow this industry. Totally agree with that. Love yeah. it. Love it. I love the first two points. Uh, what was the third again, Ravi? Agricultural land is a big problem in India. And ah. to grow this industry, we need to do lots of reforms in the way it's handled, in the way its ownership is allowed or structured, in the way it's, uh, we can pledge or not agricultural land to raise money from banks. There are all kinds of constraints nice. which make it extremely difficult to grow the industry. Yes, it's a nightmare. And you would know this because you're you're yeah. developing tourism. Yes, I mean, some, some, we didn't have enough time to talk about tourism, but tourism is such a big, can be such a huge revenue generator for the industry. I must admit, I was a bit disappointed and, and I not any example. reference made yeah. to tourism in the entire budget that just happened, right? There was no acknowledgement whatsoever. Uh, I was really hoping... Well, corner of we don't heart. expect tourists for the next year. <laughs> We don't expect no, tourism really next thought, year. <laughs> you know, Eno tourism would be sort of yeah. at least be mentioned, or something would come through for us uh, yeah. in the last budget. But uh, there wasn't even a whiff. I thought, particularly because tourism is seems to be it's the right time, right? We're not going to be traveling overseas uh, at the drop of a hat. So everybody is going to be traveling within mm -hmm. India, and I really felt that. Indian tourism or, or you know, could have been given a bit more boost, you know. And as you rightly said, just the whole thing about from buying land to developing it and starting something, it can be such a nightmare in this country, you know, in terms of uh, getting all the necessary permissions. I mean, and so if so the tea industry, which has a lot of exemption under Indian rules and constitution, and right. to face the same rules as we do, there would be no tea industry in India. Correct. Exactly. Uh, uh, also, I think Sonam Maharashtra is doing something in tourism industry more than anybody else. They are, uh, you know, because I think your mm -hmm. AIWP also, they are more linked with Maharashtra government. And so they are trying to, in fact, I believe the finance secretary was invited to visit the vineyards and taste the wine just uh, as a consumer and things like that. So they are a little bit more uh, attuned to what's going on. But I think... Uh, you're right. Uh, I, I, it's not being done at the level that, that you know, because we we have such a massive population of of uh, yeah. aspirational middle class and upwards, all the way upwards, who are just dying to spend their money and get out and looking to spend on experiences. And yeah. wine is so unique in terms of offering that experiences. Yeah. It's yeah. not unheard of to know of wineries uh, who make 40% of their total revenue just out of tourism. So it can be well, such a big bumper, you know, to helping. If you look uh, at the Napa Valley, yeah. the smaller wineries at the Napa Valley sell close to 100% of their there production to, um, to wine tourists. And Napa overall, it, you know, it, it contributes in billions to the economy. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, and we, we have that population base which can... Yeah. Uh, do that for the government, you know. So, so Sonny, may I have a crack at please, your question? Please, I was absolutely uh, coming at you. So, so, so the three points, um, you know, that I would recommend is one, I would like for the government to work towards removing the taboo surrounding alcohol consumption. Um, case in point, wine. If wine is decoupled from alcohol, I mean, that's very selfish of us to say. But overall, personally, if I was given the opportunity, I would change the whole perception about alcohol as a taboo. Even today in our country, it's kind of looked down upon. You see the permit yes. rooms, they're dark and dingy for yeah. a reason. People don't want to be seen in them. Um, uh, you know, wine shops, a lot of them, especially government owned, are not nice to visit. Um, I think especially women feel unsafe going and purchasing wine. So if your question is targeted, what do we need to do to get to 5,000 crore with it by 2026? I think an active campaign to disassociate, uh, you know, that whole negativity around alcohol consumption, something like that should be done. Yeah. Um, online sales. I think these two alone will see you through to 5,000. You don't need to do anything else. Correct. Correct. Uh, I'm sorry, Gaurav, uh, I, I, might, I must point out that when you talk of uh, uh, alcohol overall, Alcohol is a big problem internationally. Globally, is a problem in every country. And the amount of deaths we have with people who are drunk and killing people. So that sort of thing is never going to happen here. And uh, people do get uh, uh, really overly drunk with the, with the hard alcohol. And uh, I think wine is something which handled carefully, moderately. It's possible and people are doing it in general. You know, I have, we have I've done a, a sort of very interesting study. 
we have a wine club dinner delhi wine club okay and uh, we consume 0.8 bottles of wine in a dinner and sometimes 0.9 and even one bottle okay and i keep track of every dinner after dinner in the last 18 years not a single incident has happened you know in the sense that no no accident no speeding no problem of any kind now i cannot say the same thing uh with a person drinking having a session of whiskey and with having six glasses of whiskey or seven glasses and going home so what you my, my uh sorry my, my point is not about um, you know any of those things that you mentioned yeah, it's, not, just, it's not as much behavior global, yeah. globally those are those are things that you simply don't do you don't drink and drive you know but in india we actively consider white uh, you know any kind of alcohol including wine as a taboo my issue is is that um the way we position our policies we promote prohibition actively in election campaigns right so so we are saying that you know the better way of living is is without alcohol andhra pradesh came so close to going yeah. into prohibition so did kerala right yes. uh, we've already got two states uh, like that so my limited point my limited point here is just don't pitch it as a as a negative thing don't say it's positive and certainly don't advocate drink and drive um that's that's not the Of course, point I'm trying to make. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just saying, just don't consider it to be a bad thing. Um, you know, uh, so that is one. And online sales, and I think some rationalization of state uh, where you know just taxation across states, GST is a solution. What Kavi yeah. just said. Alternatively, um, just follow the example of some states which have you know very good, decent policy on taxation versus some states which have terrible way of tax uh, taxation on wine. So just fix even those states. and it's fine and you get to your 5000 crores even by 2024 by 26 that's amazing on that note i'm going to uh just quickly summarize because this has been such an exciting conversation and i'm glad i really asked that last question because it kind of helps us uh you know completely encapsulate all our points and i think we all seem to agree on the points what we really want is for wine to become a national product where there is a free movement of wine as a product across states and there aren't penalties uh, and one shouldn't have to buy a winery in an adjacent state just to be able to sell that wine in that state that's that's terrible uh, you know to have to do so we want wine to be a national product we definitely want the government to encourage online sales of wines because that can be a huge huge bump to the industry and in any case india actually has 20% of the gen z population in the world which is completely digitally savvy and they're digital natives they are you know they're not learning uh, how to go about digitization halfway through their lifespan they were born with with a with a laptop or a, or an apple phone in their hands so basically they're natives and they to them it comes really easily tourism needs to be given a huge boost because it can be a massive not just a revenue uh, you know employment rural employment but also a huge revenue earner to the exchequer um we are talking about um, the i love your point gaurav about india needs to have a more positive favorable and a healthy relationship with wine not the current convoluted relationship or the strained or the dichot dichotomy as you call it you know the dichotomous relationship that we have with wine where we want the revenue but we don't want to admit it and you know we sort of can't decide where which side of the fence we sit on so we really need to build that favorable positive relationship and uh, yeah just overall if some of these things are taken and i would just dare add to that the fact that as a business if we are then able to rationalize some of our pricing offer a high quality product that is consistent vintage after vintage has some ability to age or keep because one of the so points also for a lot of consumers is wine is different at the winery and then it's different and fully compromised when it's at the retail level so somewhere that quality needs to also be kept uh, the integrity of that quality also somehow needs to be built in factored in and maintained throughout its lifespan whatever that lifespan may be whether it's one year or it's 20 years you know what depending on the quality level of that wine uh, but some of these things and and rationalization of pricing if all of these things are taken care of i really really don't see why we can't be a 5000 crore industry over the next 5 years and inshallah gaurav in your words even in shorter period than that so i'm going to i don't have a glass of wine 
with me but i'm going to raise an imaginary glass to that thought on that note i'm going to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being part of this this amazingly engaging discussion being frank and on my final note all i really want to know is subhash i want to know where you're getting the 60% scheme from because that is my big <laughs> take away that's what i want <laughs> so anyway just trying to add some humor at the end but uh, thank you all thank you so much all right. for being thank you for organizing this thank you for having us